Hi everyone, so today we have quite a cool problem that I found and it involves derivatives and differential equations. So basically this problem involves like a differential equation and in that you're going to use some very fundamental concept of derivatives. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the motivation of the problem, but let's just begin and then we'll continue. So this is the problem A2 from the Putnam exam in 2010. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how we can solve like a simple differential equation. Well, relatively simple because it came in the Putnam exam. And uh, then I'm going to maybe talk about the intuition of the solution, the idea of derivatives and maybe the motivation for this problem. So where did they get this idea of the problem? Why was it formed? Maybe something like that, right? After that, you have certain book sessions of college mathematics and at the end, a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so we need to find all differentiable functions f defined from reals to reals such so that it satisfies this given differential equation for all reals x and natural numbers n. So very important that n needs to be greater than or equal to 1. Right? Great. So f prime x is equal to f of x plus n minus f of x divided by n. Now this is actually very, very, very similar to something that I've seen before. And that is actually called the first principle of derivatives. Right? First principle of derivatives. Right? And it essentially states, is essentially the definition of a derivative. You can think of it like this, the definition of a derivative. Right? Rate of change of something, which we learn in calculus, that's essentially the definition of the derivative. So it just states that the uh, derivative of any function f is nothing but the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And we also know for a fact that this f prime x can also be written as limit as x tends to c f of x minus f of c divided by x minus c. So basically, what am I seeing over here? What am I seeing over here? This is a slight modification of this first principle of derivative. We just don't have this limit condition. So instead of the limit h tends to 0, now h is what is h? h is basically an infinitesimally small quantity. Right? So you're just making a very, very, very small increase in the function f, f of x plus h, a very, very small quantity. Right? But, 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 this would have been basically the definition of derivative if we have had the limit condition over here. But obviously we do not have that and I think that is what makes this question nice. And that's essentially the motivation of the problem. Right? So when I see this, what's the intuition that I get? I think when I actually saw this, the first kind of thought was that is x minus will be linear, right? f of x is linear. And that is kind of like an intuition. I think it's good to explore that. Maybe like look at this condition a little bit as well. And we try to think why f might be linear. But okay, anyway, let's maybe proceed. So we have this differential equation that we need to solve x plus n minus f of x divided by n. So it holds for all natural numbers n and not just that limit h tends to zero, right? All natural numbers n. And that is the differential equation we need to solve. So this only holds for certain function. This thing, this thing that we've written over here, the definition of derivative, first principle derivatives, holds for all differentiable functions. But this only holds for certain functions. And maybe we need to try and find such functions to satisfy that. So well, what do we start? We obviously start with a little bit of exploration. So maybe let's just put n is equal to one and let's see what we get. We get f prime x is equal to f of x plus one minus f of x. Okay, great. And maybe let's just say, let's put an n is equal to two. So when I do that, I'll get f prime x is equal to f of x plus two minus f of x divided by two. Right, I think that should be pretty clear. Okay, great. Now there's actually something cool that I can do maybe over in this equation number three. So I can write f prime x as f of x plus two minus f of x plus one plus f of x plus one minus f of x whole divided by two. I really did nothing, but I just added and subtracted this f of x plus one quantity, right? So I added and subtracted that and maybe we can just split up this right hand side. I'll get something like this. I'll get half of f of x plus two minus f of x plus one, right? Plus half of this other thing is f of x plus one minus f of x. 
now 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 we start to notice certain similarities now from equation number what was it i don't know uh, from equation number two we had f prime x is equal to this right so from two we had f prime x is basically f of x plus one minus f of x so maybe if i replace x with x plus one i'll get another relation right so f prime x plus one is actually equal to f of x plus two minus f of x plus one why did i do this because we have this term over here f of x plus two minus f of x plus one and that's nothing but f prime x plus one similarly similarly what is this this is nothing but f prime x from equation number two and this is what we will literally see over here so basically what this entire thing reduces to maybe let's just put this as number four so what does equation number four reduces to so it reduces to f prime x is equal to half of f prime x plus one my plus half of f prime x right great now well what can we do next so maybe let's just bring this f prime x to the other side so it becomes f prime x by 2 is equal to f prime x plus 1 by 2 right so f prime x is equal to f prime x plus 1 now believe this or not again once i reach this stage again get the intuition that it's linear right again kind of start thinking that what is a function so that the derivative at x is equal to derivative x plus 1 it's kind of like a linear function but okay and this obviously holds for all x belongs to real numbers so maybe let's just try and uh, get a formal argument for why it will be linear so this essentially means that the f prime of x plus 1 minus f prime of x is 0 in other words the derivative of f of x plus 1 minus f of x is equal to 0 right okay great so what does that mean so when is the derivative 0 when is a derivative of something 0 when that thing is constant right for example d by dx of a constant c is 0 so that means that this f of x plus 1 minus f of x has to be a constant c again i'm getting the intuition that is linear but okay we haven't completed the proof yet now now from equation number two that we had formed from equation number two what was it basically plugging n is equal to one into original differential equation so you would get f prime x is equal to f of x plus one minus f of x this is equation number two basically and you see that we have this over here as well so this is nothing but f prime x so f prime x is a c now what does that mean the derivative of a particular function is a constant therefore what is the function it is cx plus t because then the derivative of f prime x is particular to c that will be c the derivative of a constant d will be zero and here obviously c d are constants and they are real numbers so therefore f of x is equal to cx plus d is the only solution and it is linear like i was saying and you can really go on to check this so maybe let's just verify this so what will be f prime x f prime x will be c will be f of x plus n this will be c times x plus n plus d this will be cx plus cn plus d what will be maybe f of x that is cx plus d so maybe let's just try and uh, figure out the what the right hand side will be the right hand side was f of x plus n minus f of x whole divided by n so that becomes cx plus cn plus d minus cx minus d divided by n so a lot of things cancel out and you get left with cn divided by n so that is simply c and obviously the left hand side was also c right f prime x was obviously equal to c so hence we see that this is verified and f of x is equal to cx plus d is our one and only solution which so happens to be linear so yeah, it really would be like that and the intuition was pretty good actually like many there are like many places in the solution where i'm just like okay this has to be linear this has to be linear but certain times you just need to prove it right maybe this exists some other function which you don't know but in this case it didn't obviously so yeah quite a neat function quite a neat uh, differential equation and really hope you learned something from that okay so moving on we have some book sessions of college mathematics introduction to real analysis principles of mathematical analysis by rudin Calculus Volume 1 and Volume 2 by Apostle, Topology, Contemporary Abstract Algebra by Gillian, Topics in Algebra by Hurstein, Abstract Algebra by Dometed Foot, and Linear Algebra Done Right by Axler. Okay, so we have a similar but challenging problem, and this is involving the modulus function, right? So find all differentiable functions f, mapping from reals to reals, such that it satisfies this given differential equation, right? The modulus of f prime x is 1 minus the modulus of f of x. So maybe give it a try and if you're able to solve it or make any progress on it, let me know in the comment section below. 
and until then i'll see you in the next video thank you very much and bye bye the programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics and they are personalized with one on one training individual evaluation and remedial sessions the reason chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real olympians from leading universities in india united states and europe some of our students come back to teach at chinta from oxford cambridge harvard mit ucla isi cmi iits tifr and iisc for more information visit chinta.com